I'm Dr. Max Collins. I'm a doctor of chiropractic. I finished school in uh, November of 1989 from Life University, which was a pretty interesting course of action. It's very diversified um, to where it gave me a very broad ability to look at many directions. Dr. Sid Williams, the founder of the university, was very much into saying that if we're going to call ourselves doctors, we need to be doctors. And so our curriculum entailed many things that uh, allow us to see ourselves as general practitioners in the sense of being able to address issues that are for overall health and wellness, and particularly in the realm of neuroimmunity. If the nervous system is sick, your body's inability to attack and deal with illnesses become a reality. What we're looking at with this recent event with the coronavirus is that we've got to deal with a protein invasion of the body that is being hidden by a mask cell or a, a lipid membrane. And so whether it be a bacteria or whether it be a dust or pollen particle or whether it be a virus, the body responds similarly. And so what you have to do is you have to create an environment through which that outer layer protecting your immune system from seeing it can be taken down so that your body can then deal with the immune responses necessary to destroy that protein source. Whether, again, whether it be bacteria, pollen, and or a viral segment of protein. So in the recent events, the chloroquine has been an interesting product to see help. We had experimented with these type compounds back in the earlier phase of my practice. I worked in conjunction with a compounding pharmacist, an internal medicine person, and so guaifenesin, quinine, these things were used in treatment of malaria and similar illnesses in the past. What makes this product interesting is that it contains a cyclic ring, two cyclic rings with a chloride molecule. These cyclic rings are unique because they're carbon-oxygen double bonded. That gives you, anywhere you have a double bonded carbon to oxygen, or double bonded carbons, or double bonded nitrogen and carbons, you have tremendous amounts of energy available. The key is, is being able to open that up and make this happen. So this one medication has proven to have some benefits because of that very um, availability of those two cyclic rings. So if we now think of the two cyclic rings of the chloroquine, we look at the chlorophyll molecule that's found in green plants, that's found in beets, that's found in seaweed, and any other source that would have chlorophyll. We don't think of beets as chlorophyll, but there's actually a tremendous type of chlorophyll in that beet. So what we're looking at then is the chlorophyll molecule actually has eight cyclic rings available. It has four nitrogens, it has tons of oxygen, and so as a result of it, it has the ability to create similar effects as this medication, but on a much larger scale. The key, though, is being able to open that chlorophyll molecule up. We're not grazers, we're not plant chewers in the sense of animals with two stomachs and that. So a, the ability to break that chlorophyll open, that plant matter open, is important to pre-digest it. So if you've ever wilted a salad, taking your marinated greens, whether they be kale or spinach or whatever, and you add vinegar, acetic acid, to it, that plant particle becomes more flexible, which begins to break these carbon, carbon bonds, these carbon-oxygen bonds, these carbon-nitrogen bonds, which then makes these components available, which is why the chlorophyll and acetic acid, just those two simple products, are so huge, because what then happens is that once that chlorophyll molecule begins to disassociate from the magnesium, you can make um, an O3 molecule, ozone, which is tremendously lytic for bacteria and protein structures. You can make hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, and you can make ammonia. So it's just like doing a hair perm. You want to open the molecule, the protein up, to put a color or to change its shape, you use ammonia. And to close it up and to rehydrogenate so you repair the protein structures, you use hydrogen peroxide. So our body uses these same mechanisms for destroying 
proteins and things that don't belong or even just digesting our foods. It allows us to access and break them down into basic short chain amino acids, shorter chain fatty acids so that our body can either decide to use them as an excretion waste or eliminate them or eliminate them through that excretion waste or use them as building blocks for restoring other functions. So the biggest thing with reducing the overall spread is to not have a carrier. So if you're not the carrier, if you're not in a, an environment, if your body is not in that environment to be a carrier of that virus, you then are going to reduce the spread. So if you do something as simple as checking your saliva pH an hour after eating or first thing in the morning, it's going to give you an idea of where your pH is. If your pH is not at 772 on waking in the morning and or an hour or so after eating, if you're acidic in that acidic zone, that is a high protein inflammatory state. And so your body is less likely to be able to access that fatty lipid membrane, that mask cell around this, that thing that's hiding that protein, whether it be bacteria or pollen and or the virus. And so what happens is that when you can create this alkaline environment, what will happen is your body can more likely destroy the fat, destroy the protein, and either utilize it as building blocks or eliminate it as waste. For example, those nitrogens that are available go into the formation of urea, which is the way your body gets rid of foreign proteins and protein metabolism in the body. Um, so those are some simple ways of protecting you as a, as a possible carrier so that you're not, and so thus you're going to reduce the overall potential of spread of the situation. If everyone were adding these simple things to their diet, the ability of changing an environmental situation would be huge by just adding these few items, the chlorophyll, in the form of a green smoothie because you just don't want to eat the salad. If it's a salad, you need to allow it to wilt. Allow for that green plant matter to soften. Even give up a little bit of green water. You know, As you're making a salad, it will wilt and have this green tinge to your salad dressing. You know, Without that component, it's going to be harder for you to break down and get utilize all the energy that's available. But if people were using this approach on a daily basis, twice, three times a day, their blood acidity would become more alkaline and it would create an environment to which they would no longer be susceptible to that virus or to other pathogens. Pollen, right now is a high pollen count time. So reduce your sensitivity to the pollen because that mucus that would be caused from the pollen is going to make you that much more susceptible to other invasions, whether that be bacterial or viral. So the, so the simplest thing would be to implement wilted salads and green smoothies using combinations of the seaweeds, the sea vegetables, the green plant matters, leafy, kale, spinach, romaine, things like that as well as, don't forget, that your chlorophyll also exists in plants like your beets. So both the beet green and the beet root. Those are tremendous purple cabbage versus just green cabbage. And adding a source of vinegar, the acetic acid, that is the factor for opening that molecule. Oil and vinegar salad dressing is only an oil and vinegar salad dressing. If you just add water to the oil, you get an, the inability for those two to mix. That vinegar works as a solvent to break that fat down so that it can be attacked. And it works the same way in your gut for gut health. By breaking down that fat, it allows the better processing of that fat and then identifying whether there be a nutrient available or eliminating a pathogen, that protein, whether it be cell type and or viral situation.